Have you experienced the magic of artificial intelligence? I'm a nerd, you can tell. <laughs> for my kids, magic is wands and spells, but for me, magic, like real magic, Excel. I remember the first time I opened a spreadsheet. It was a computer the size of a mini fridge, taking half the space of a desk, and I have to use these things called floppy disks. Took a while, eventually loaded, <laughs> and then I discovered that you can do calculations in cells, you can do calculations in ranges, you can do projections, regressions, graphs. Wow. It made me feel smart, it made me feel productive, truly magical. I wish all first-time experiences with, you know, experiences in technology, they were this magical. But let me tell you what happened when I started my first company. I was in the middle of college, and then this thing called the internet happened. Well, it was there, but I just discovered it. And initially, it was black screens with white fonts, and really, there wasn't much to it, telnets, FTPs. But then, 1993 happened, the first web browser came up, and web pages appear. Wow! Mario, a really good friend of mine, also a nerd, he said, we should build a business around this. And we built one of the first dot-coms in Mexico. We put together a pitch, we built demos, we made appointments, we appear in front of the executives, and guess what? Nothing. Executives thought internet at that moment was about emails. They have no idea what a web browser was, and they cared nothing about online presence, nothing. Still, we kept doing appointments, more demos, catching up with homework. One day, I just arrived super late at home. I opened the door, I was very tired, and I see my mom seated on the living room. And she said, can we chat for a moment? I was like, of course. I walked towards the living room, sat on a big chair right next to her. And she looked at me and she said, hijo, stop wasting your time and your effort and find a real job in a real company. It felt like a punch in the gut. Didn't know exactly what to think or what to make out of it. And it made me feel powerless. It made me feel like a failure at that moment. But let me tell you how I got here. My father, electronic engineer, big passion for technology. He actually passed that book to me. And he said, technology, you should see it like a friendly companion with a lot of potential. And it's up to you to figure out how to make the best out of it. With those words, he actually propelled my career. I didn't know it at the moment. Remember the company I just said? Well, we kept working on it. We did one of the first e-commerce implementations in the country. We did the first bank experience in the country. We had clients in the US. Eventually, that company led me to work in Silicon Valley, nerd heaven. For over 25 years now, I have had the opportunity to work with technology and innovate new experiences with it. First as an employee, then as a manager, eventually as a consultant, now as a speaker. I've gone through different teams and helped them create new business, new processes, new products, new services, name it. My sister, she's an accountant, she's in Mexico, <clears throat> and we had the opportunity to chat and she said, and what is it that you do right now in your latest venture? And I answer very, as a matter of fact, it's like, well, we take artificial intelligence, like ChatGPT, and we improve processes like brainstorming for innovation or problem solving for manufacturing or competitive analysis for marketing. She looked at me and she said, I don't know what you're talking about. What is this GPT chat? It hit me. There is an AI inequality gap building. There's a lot of people that already use ChatGPT on a daily basis, 
but there are millions and millions of millions of people out there that they don't know about it. They have never tried it out. They don't know how to use it, and many people are afraid of it. And why it's important to close this inequality gap is because AI is going to dramatically transform the way we work and we live. It's going to be a major change in our society. The more people they know how to use AI today, the better prepared they're going to be for the future. They can be more productive, more successful, and we can have a better society. So I know that adopting new technologies is not easy for everybody. I've seen it through my career. But I also noticed that when there's a new technology and you explain it in simple terms, and you give a real-world example on how to use it, then people are open to give it a try. Once they try it, they can see the benefit, and then they adopt it. You see this pattern over and over with new technology. So with that in mind, I turned to my sister and I said, well, let me tell you, ChatGPT has been around for just about a year, November 2022. And it's made from this company called OpenAI. They took millions and millions of pages, they analyzed the language, and they created a model that you can chat with. That's why this technology is called conversational AI, because you can have a conversation with it. And I also mentioned, if I have to define ChatGPT, it's like an expert companion that you can chat with, it can answer questions, and help you with stuff. And when I say the stuff, it's like every topic imaginable. You can be an accountant like my sister, you can be an architect, an engineer, pretty much any manager, any employee of any industry, and you're going to find benefit using ChatGPT for work. I guarantee it. And I told my sister, what's more, you can speak in Spanish to it, which is her native language. ChatGPT speaks English, Spanish, German, Japanese, Chinese, a bunch of languages. And here is kind of a breakthrough. If you already have a smartphone and you know how to send a text message, you have all the technology and all the knowledge needed to start using ChatGPT today. As simple as that, sending a text message. Then she actually got really interested in it. So let me share, share with you how I would use ChatGPT to help my sister understand what is ChatGPT. So <laughs> this is my phone. You can open uh, Chrome, Safari, whatever web browser in your phone, and then just search for ChatGPT. As you search for it, here we go, ChatGPT, make sure that you skip all the advertising and go with the one that says OpenAI, which is the company that created it. You'll see a screen like this. You can sign up using your email. Nothing more. Once you sign in, you'll see a welcome screen. And the magic is the UI looks like a text message UI. Correct? Here at the bottom, you send messages. Now, we nerds, we don't call it messages. That's too simple. We call it prompts. <laughs> so let me share with you how I would prompt ChatGPT to help me help my sister. I will start with a role. Think about a conversation. You, you know, what kind of expert you want to talk to? So in this case, I'm going to say something like, you know, act as a technology trainer expert. You know, someone that actually knows about this. This will help the system understand the context a little bit and the tone. Now, then I share the actual context. Could be a problem, could be a situation. You know, my sister wants to know what is ChatGPT, but she doesn't know anything about AI. And uh, that's it. That is kind of the context. Context is a problem. And then I will go and, and ask for an action. What is the action? Something that you want out of it. Give me five ideas on how to solve this problem. And just like that, ChatGPT is going to bring me five ideas on how to solve this problem, how I can approach ChatGPT to present it to my sister. Now, you got the answers, and they're really interesting. What do you do next? Just continue the conversation. Play with it. You're going to start discovering things that you never thought AI was possible to do in. So in my case, I'm going to say something like, hey, 
elaborate more on number four. But I could say, write an email that I can send to my sister with number three. Or I could say as well, I didn't like your ideas. Give me another five. They don't have feelings. It's OK. <laughs> All right. So artificial intelligence doesn't mean perfect intelligence. It's quite flawed right now. It's going to get better. So always use your judgment and check the facts. Now that you got a glimpse on how to use it, I'm going to ask of you something really simple. Take 10 minutes of your time if you have never used ChatGPT and just think of a problem and give it a try. Now, if you already know how to use ChatGPT, take 10 minutes of your time and teach somebody else on how to use it. Let's close this inequity gap together. I'm convinced this technology is for the better for everybody. I'm absolutely sure about it. Feel empowered to start using AI. Experience the, the outcomes and feel more productive, feel more successful, and start experiencing the magic of artificial intelligence. I'll leave you with this. No one says it better than Alan Kay. The best way to predict the future is to invent it.